Hello everybody and welcome to SQL on the Edge. This is episode 14 and today we're going to talk about Cosmos DB Geo Replication. My name is Warner Chavez. I'm a SQL MCM and Microsoft Data Platform MVP and I work at Pythian. Make sure you visit us at pythian.com. So topic for today is Cosmos DB Geo Replication. If you are interested in Cosmos DB, I did a previous video blog about Cosmos DB request units. That was episode 13. You can check it out uh, on Pythian's blog or on the YouTube playlist as well. A quick refresher, Cosmos DB is Azure's NoSQL database as a service offering. And uh, it is a called a Ring Zero service by Microsoft, which basically just means that Cosmos DB gets deployed on every Azure region by default when those regions open. Um, what this means also is that Cosmos is very widespread around the world because Microsoft has uh, over 35 regions, I think, at this point, and every single one of them has Cosmos. And because GeoReplication was built in from the very beginning into Cosmos, you can geo-replicate your database from uh, wherever the primary is to anywhere all, all of these uh, global locations. So I can have my primary database in the east coast of the US and uh, re geo replicate it all the way to the data centers in Ireland. I can have it my primary in Tokyo and I can geo replicate it all the way to the west coast US data center, for example. So really long distances, it's all um, managed by Microsoft. You don't need to do anything in regards to setting up the geo replication. It is very simple. We're going to see that on the demo. And the cool thing is that it's not only for disaster recovery capabilities, but you can also do read only querying and get a good latency to move that data closer to where your users are. It also has some other usefulness, for example, for data sovereignty, because you can pick um, the failover regions. So it doesn't move outside, let's say, uh, regulatory boundaries for your data. And also you can pick priorities on uh, failovers. So for example, if you have a big mass of users in a particular location, you can pick the failover order so that it moves um, away from your users in distance, right? So the first failover would be to a region that is still close to your users, and the next one would be to a region that is a little bit farther from your users, and so on, okay? So let's go to the demo, and we're going to see how to set up the geo replication for Cosmos, and we're going to see also how it impacts for the read-only queries, the latency, when we pick a region that is close to where we are, okay? Let's go check it out. Okay, so I am here on my Azure portal and you guys can see I have my Azure portal open on the Cosmos Blade for my Cosmos DB account and database. Um, and here on the side is where we can see the different options that we have and we have the option down here over settings where it says replicate data globally. So this is all very simple GUI based on the portal to pretty much replicate um, to many, many different regions around the world. Like I said here, um, I am currently selected on East US 2 and I am going to select that I want to replicate all the way to the west coast of the US. So I just have to pick the region like that. I do a little click and then I just go to save and automatically it will start doing the work behind the scenes to geo replicate the database over from the east coast of the US to the west coast of the US. Okay, so now we can see the geo replication is set up and it is currently syncing. We have our write region in East US 2 and a read region in the West US. Now there's a couple of buttons here at the top. I'm going to show you guys what they do. If you go to automatic failover, then it's very simple. You can just turn it on. The default is to be off. What this does is that in the event of a regional issue with your Azure data center, then Microsoft will fail over the database automatically. Now you also have the option to doing the manual failover. Now here, if I had multiple read regions, then it would let me select the one that I want to fail over to. But because I only have the one West US read region, then basically I just have the choice to uh, select that one. And then I have to acknowledge what I'm doing in case I was doing this on a production application, let's say. And then just have to say, OK. And at this point, again, Azure is going to take over and is going to change the roles so that East US 2 is going to become a read region and then West US is going to become a read and write region. Okay, so we can see I get a notification that the manual failover has completed and it was okay. I should refresh this here and we should be able to see the new setup of the regions. 
So as we can see here now, we have changed the role. Now write region says West US and read region says East US too. Now let's check out the test utility. And we're gonna be able to see how this is configured and what performance we get uh, from our queries using read-only replicas. So I'm just gonna set one machine, one call, one iteration. And then we're gonna check out the status here. So right now it just says that the Cosmos read endpoint and the write endpoint is both on West US. And the reason it says this is because I have not enabled geo replication, um, geo reads yet on this utility. So it's very simple in terms of code. If I go to my code, you guys can see here, the important part is just this. All I had to do is create a connection policy object and then I just add preferred locations, East US too. So remember, my primary is now West US, and I just add the new location of East US too when I enable geo replication. So this VM is in the East Coast. So if I try to do some uh, test queries right now, we can see here, I'm gonna rerun it again, and we can see here at the bottom, I get uh, milliseconds that are in the hundreds because the copy is in the West Coast, right? So this VM is in the East Coast. The actual database is in the West Coast. If I run this again, you guys can see I get pretty much um, very uniform 100 and 150 or so milliseconds latency when doing these queries. Now, if I enable GeoRead, so now that is enabled for GeoReads, and I go to status. Now we can see my read endpoint is East US 2, and my write endpoint is West US. Now, if I rerun the query that I had before, you can see now my latency has gone down from 156 to only 100 milliseconds. And if I run it again, we can see now I get an even bigger boost because of obviously the caching and because the client was uh, reinitialized. And, and now if I keep running it, we can see that it's only 30 milliseconds. So we went from um, uniformly about 100, 150 milliseconds to the West Coast to 31 milliseconds or so uh, because now we are reading off of our local copy in the East Coast. And obviously you can just configure this based on where the biggest percentage of your users are so that you're serving the data fastest to your uh, the biggest audience that you have around the world, pretty much. Okay, so I hope you got a good overview of how easy it is to set up the geo replication for Cosmos DB on the portal, how easy it is to trigger a manual failover if you are intentionally doing it, or if you wanna do like a DR exercise. Uh, we checked the little snippet on the code that makes it very easy as well to configure the geo replication. And also we checked out on the utility how the distance by reading to a data center that is closer to us gives us a lot better latency for our queries. And remember, this is all built in, turnkey global distribution built into Cosmos DB, which is something that uh, Microsoft's competitors cannot say. Amazon DynamoDB, you gotta roll your own geo replication, and Google Spanner does not have it out yet. Microsoft is really way ahead of the competition in this space, all right? So I hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna have uh, more videos coming up with more material related to the Microsoft Data Platform, so stay tuned, and thanks for watching.